Okay, lots of progress this week in our kitchen and the biggest thing is getting the sink and faucet in. All of a sudden we can use this kitchen again, which is pretty amazing. Yeah, it's been a big push to get some functionality back in here. Yeah. We've been doing dishes in the bathroom sink, which is like this big. Yeah. <laughs> it's not very fun um, living out of there, getting water out of there, everything. So this yeah. is going to be really nice to have a functional sink faucet here in the kitchen. And it, it's really an awesome sink too. Yeah, so I chose a really large single basin farmhouse sink. Um, this is a farmhouse, so it felt pretty appropriate um, to go with an apron front. and. I love it. I think it's really beautiful. It fits really well with the marble countertops. We also went with undermount, which is something we try to always get if we can, just to kind of give us a little more um, room on the countertops and functionality there. I love being able to just swipe stuff off right into the sink. Yeah. Like you're wiping down the counters or chop, you know, you have a cutting board or something, and it's, everything just goes right in there on the undermount. So it's super nice. I yeah. Think. So when you put in a farmhouse sink, a lot of times the sink base is going to need a little bit of retrofitting and. Get Garrett did that here. This is a super deep sink, um, the fire clay from LK. So we had to actually lower this cross piece that's in the cabinet and shorten the doors by like three inches. Yeah, it was roughly about three inches. So and how do you, you use? Kathy had a good idea to yeah. actually just cut out like a middle section of the door and then glue the top frame back onto that the bottom part. And basically, that's exactly what I did. Just used a table saw to cut the section out, drop that top piece on, and clamped it, and glued it, and screwed it. So these doors, you can't even tell yeah, that you they can't were, tell. you know, We also did paint them taller. after the fact, so um, yeah, they used to paint. be wood, and it would have been a lot harder, I think, if we were doing a wood cabinet to kind of deal with those things. But since we were uh, painting them, we were able to fill them, you know, sand them, and, and they're as good as new. So it was pretty easy to pick out our sink and faucet after we kind of realized what was wrong with our original ones. Um, when we did buy this house three years ago, there was already a crack in the sink. Um, so we knew we were gonna have to replace that at some point. We also didn't like how tall it was. It was, um, it was an overmount sink and it, you know, it yeah, started about remember, here. It actually, there was a big backsplash on the sink and it came up like that yeah. and it sat above the countertop. So it was hard. I mean, the kids, like the kids would be, could never get in here without, you know, like two chairs and they were climbing over, all over each other. So it's nicer to have it a little bit lower for kids. And I also like um, that this does not have that integral backsplash because, you know, as fun and historic as that feels, it also really like stops your eye and all of a sudden the countertops stop and it just kind of squishes the kitchen a little bit more. Yeah, so, it broke it up. And so this yeah. is much cleaner and one thing we've noticed already just in this middle kind of yeah. early update is that the kitchen just feels so much more open yeah. without the big fridge like right blocking the countertop over there and then having an undermount sink. having the yeah. undermount sink is like it just really creates honestly a lot of this feels like it's twice as long as it used to it's it's gonna be awesome for us one awesome other thing that I didn't really like about the last thing is that there was no sprayer yes yes and it was a, yeah. basically a fixed like wall mount faucet. And yeah. so we have three young kids and we live in the country. So messes are like an, definitely a daily occurrence, but more like an hourly occurrence. We are always, always using a sprayer. So that was, that was kind of tough. Yeah. So this one has an awesome sprayer. For the steps for putting in the faucet, I actually used a diamond corbett to drill through the countertop after I had it all glued in and let it set up overnight. Drill. This faucet has three holes, right? It's a three, three hole. Yeah. So I used a diamond corbett to drill down through the countertop and then just put the supply lines through, connected everything up. It was really simple install and I'm really happy with how it came out. It's really sturdy. and. Um, I love this faucet. So we've actually used this faucet at our porch house reno, um, and I Once have you find always loved you it. Like, just go with it. <laughs> yeah. it, it. It's awesome. Like you don't have to try to hem and haw. If you know it's perfect, if you know you, you love, know it, love it, just use it. Get it again. Um, <laughs> things I also like about it is the bridge style feels really traditional, but there's also kind of a modern vibe to it. So it kind of goes with that modern farmhouse look. Um, and the the finish is lustrous steel 
which kind of matches the stainless steel. Um, when I'm doing a kitchen, I like to limit our finishes to two or three, you know, including the appliances. So picking a steel faucet really works well to tie into the rest of the finishes in the kitchen. This sink is the fire clay undermount single basin sink from LK. Mm -hmm. And it's a really awesome sink. And it, um, one thing I really liked about this installation was I was able to actually do the faucet installation before doing the sink installation. So I wasn't having to like get yeah. under the sink and like try to tighten stuff up. It was all open. And then because it's the farmhouse style, you can actually slide it in from the front after you get your faucet all mounted nicely. So that was a real big bonus. So we put the marble countertops in this week. Um, Garrett fabricated these. Um, they're two centimeter and then we ripped off the front lip that normally kind of curves around the countertop. So they're, I really like how thin they kind of feel old world and um, just delicate. I am kind of obsessed with this marble. We got it at our marble place in Seattle, GS cabinets, but yeah, they're getting out of the marble selling business. Yeah. They said that they're discontinuing marble generally. They, this was like two of their last slabs and, and they came in actual four by eight foot slabs. And I, I can't even guess how heavy they were, but yeah, like were ridiculous. Really... Yeah. Yeah. So it was a big no, job to get these good. fabricated yeah. and Garrett did an awesome job. He also honed them for me. So we're going to seal them and I, I just can't even, I'm so excited to have these. They're really Yeah. Beautiful. I would say this marble, these countertops are the nicest that I've been, I've been able to do. So I was happy that I had done lots of practice yeah. before and <laughs> Now we have a nice kitchen here for our farmhouse and it's kind of all coming together. Yeah. Um, I did break one of the slabs you did. <laughs> at the beginning ah. <laughs> uh, when we were, when I was trying to move it by myself. Uh, but before we, he called me out there, he had measured and made sure that he could still fit all the countertops we needed out of the slab. Yeah, fortunately so. it Phew. broke in like a perfect angle. Fortunate for Garrett. Didn't yeah. actually <laughs> have to get any different pieces. But. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was, it's, it's a time consuming job, but they came out really nicely. I'm really happy with them. Yeah. I'm so happy with them. Thank you. I know it's a big job. I really, really appreciate it. Um, and I didn't even have to ask Garrett honed it before I could even decide if I wanted to or not. I, I would have decided I wanted to, so. <laughs> yeah. So when I, when we get the marble slabs, they come with a pre like done, yeah. like it's very gloss. It's like a high gloss yeah. uh, finish. That's pretty reflective. It's like polished. Yeah. Polished. And part of that is to protect the stone. It, it seals the pores and makes it a little bit more stain resistant, but to get that matte look, that patina, um, natural yeah. honed look, you have to use a stone polisher with around 400 grit diamond polishing pads to take that really glossy finish off and get it to that more uh, more rustic kind of uh, yeah. look. So that's what we did. Pairing with this farmhouse sink and the steel faucet are our hardware, which is a unlacquered brass. So I am mixing. <laughs> I love it. Um, I am mixing finishes here and um, you know, I stick to two to three in a kitchen. So these are my two and I will kind of repeat these they're throughout. Really lovely. They, they really are. Very they're amazing. Nice. Yeah. They're really, nice. <laughs> they're really solid. You know, everything we're using in this kitchen is super solid. Um, in the past, you know, sometimes we'll skimp and buy an expensive hardware or an expensive faucet, but not at our farmhouse. We really, really want to buy the best, not necessarily the best, but by high quality, beautiful finishes that are gonna last. So yeah. that's what we're doing here. We're going with a pretty white kitchen in the end. Um, I, a couple months it is ago. It's turning out white. It's yeah. turning out quite white. It but. wasn't gonna be white, but a couple months ago, I just started seeing all these white kitchens and I was like, you know what? This is a, a farmhouse in the country and white kind of feels right to me. So, you know, if we end up hating it, we can always paint again, but we're going with white cabinets. Uh, the marble countertops. We're going to have um, tongue and groove paneling on all these walls. That is going to be white as well. There will be some upper cabinets and um, we're going to have to do a little bit of retrofitting on those. Still haven't quite decided <laughs> what I'm doing for that. Um, but there's going to be a lot of white in here and hopefully we're going to temper it with um, some wood, the brass, the steel, you know, some of those other kind of raw materials. 
So one thing we're still debating on are the floors. Um, this is the, I think it's the original fur and it goes throughout the house. Uh, we did refinish them upstairs and they're beautiful, but fur is really soft and it has a tendency to turn orange. So I've kind of thought maybe we'd replace them with white oak or Garrett really wants to do stone throughout this back of the house, but I'm kind of reneging on my promise to do stone. <laughs> Because I've seen, you know, a little bit of this wood now that we have the white and the marble on. Um, the wood really warms up the space, so so we'll see about that. Are As still, to be continued. Yeah. The flooring. Are you still voting stone, or do you? What is your vote? Oh, you know. <laughs> Whatever you want, honey. <laughs> so next up is to get the gas going. Um, because that's going to be key to get the We're bringing a stove. new gas service to the property. There's no gas here, so. Yeah. So we're going to get that going and um, we're going to get trim going, start the wall paneling. And we're also going to put, we're still thinking we're going to put skylights in. So we're going to have to get those skylights in and. Lighting. Get some figure of those out the other floors. finished yeah. lighting stuff. So. Our fridge is also still currently in the dining room, so hopefully someday. That'll be, that'll be way down the road. Might That's not be, be till like September, but hopefully, you months. know, we'll get this pantry going too, and then we'll be able to bring that, our food and, and the fridge back, back into the kitchen. If you've ever renovated while you're living in a space, you know how tricky it can be to miss those really functional aspects of like a kitchen or a bathroom. Yeah. So, we went ahead and got the sink and faucet in here with some countertop space and we're going to be able to use all this um, while we're still working on some other you know yeah maybe we'll put a little bit of trim on the window you know like finish out <laughs> yeah. some of those this things. was we call this phase one of the renovation and because we're living in this with three young children our goal was to get the sink and the faucet and the cabinets and the countertops functioning again because now we'll use this while we're renovating it. It's not exactly ideal, but you know, nothing in an old house is. <laughs> so, um, we are gonna lose the stove soon and the, you know, the range. So that'll be, um, and that's probably gonna be for, you know, maybe up to a month. So that will be inconvenience number two, but yeah. thankfully we'll at least be able to do the dishes. Yeah. And it's in summer, our so we're going to be grilling yeah. a lot. And we just bought a cow that's all wrapped Half. up and packaged. So Half a cow. we have a nice freezer full of grill food, and it's going to be good. I'm excited. It's going to be great.